Welcome to the Hampshire Raven, the Mecca of course fishing. That was a lot of shot. Well, I don't know what this is, it's a job of work. So you're tackling up for roach then? That's it. Yeah. With a feeder. A little feeder. I'm using these new Drenham ones which have the balanced weights in so you can add or take weight away. So you just oh, critically balance to the flow. Yeah. So if you get a bite, it will drop back on your tip. So you're not having to strike it. Yeah. And you don't need an awful lot of feeding like these, no, obviously. No. no. Yeah. On a day like this I'll probably be leaving that in for about 15 minutes yeah. really. So, how much weight can you get in here, maximum? Maximum on the small ones is, I think about 20 grams. There's a 13 gram weight there, that just slots in the bottom. And there's a seven gram weight, so 20 grams. But you can, you know, you can drop down to seven, you can drop down to 13, you can drop down to five. Very quickly? Very quickly, yeah. You just have to sort of shove the weight out and put another one in. Without having to re tackle No, no not like at all. Not at all. They're idea. excellent excellent bits of kits. And they self balance as well, so if they land on the. Not that it matters very much, but if they land like that, they'll, 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 they'll flip well, over. Allegedly. <laughs> they right. do on my kitchen table anyway, whether they do on the, on the bottom, yeah. I don't really know, but they're really good. And if it does land on the flat side, it's going to give extra grip as yeah, well that's, without that's that's right. bouncing around. That's right. That's a very good idea. But what you're looking for here is really just to balance, balance it to the flow, just straight out across, big loop in your line. Yeah. So you get a bite, the tip just knocks back. Because yeah. you're only using small hooks, light line, and yeah. you don't want to be striking, just lift into the fish. Yeah. And what size hooks are you using? I'll be using size here? 20 today. 20? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Either these or um, they're actually quite big for their uh, for their size. Size 20? Just a single mag on a size 20. I mean the fish here are very pressurised. The roach, you know, you get a lot of people fishing for them, so the very presentation shy, so you've got to be quite careful what you fish with. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons why I use a really soft rod. If you use a stiff rod with that with that size hook in the current on a big roach sort of flapping around on top, you'd, you'd lose a lot of fish. That's right. So this rod is very, very soft, bends all the way through, so it sort of protects the hook a little bit. So you've got a shock absorber as yep. well. Yep. Yeah, size 20s. Because, uh, <laughs> I remember the days when I could see hooks out so yeah. you had <laughs> Yeah. But they're a, they're a good pattern, but I generally use a carbon chopper. They don't make those anymore, sadly, Drennan. No. That's a great pattern, that. Just a bit stronger in the wire, so if you do get a decent chub, you, yeah. can, uh, you can land it as well. Yeah, that's the best piece of advice you can give anyone. When you find something that works, buy a shed full of it. Because sooner or later, they'll improve it. That's right. That's right. Well, what I'm using instead of a... Um, just a, a, a knot, a sort of paternoster knot, is uh, is a fox float stop. Yeah. Um, you thread both your main line and the, uh, the, the paternoster link, if I should call it that, mm -hmm. through the float stop, pull them both through. Mm -hmm. So you've got both both paternoster link and main line going through the knot. Mm -hmm. um, then you tie on a little swivel to the um, to the paternoster link. The link I'm using here is um, is actually fluorocarbon, so it's a little bit stiffer. Uh -huh. So it just stands it away a little bit from the main line. Yeah. Eases tangles. Yeah, that makes sense. What you've got to remember is to tie a knot in the top end of it, because if you get snagged and the feeder sticks on the bottom, it'll, you'll pull through. That's right. But the, the advantage of this is that you can um, alter the distance between feeder and main line. You can alter your hook length, your basically your hook length by moving that up and down the line, so you get a lot more flexibility. Yeah. Um, and it's one less knot on the uh, on the yeah. rig. And that will grip enough, yeah. so it won't slip yeah. while you're casting. Some people use two, but uh, I've never. If you're using a small feeder, well, that's that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, and of course, when the bites are a bit tough, you can just swap the feeder off um, for a for a bomb. 
you don't want to be overfeeding really, especially on a day like this. Yeah, and these float stops, you can get them in different diameters, can't you? Yeah. The thicker lines yep, and you can. finer lines. Yes, yeah, but they're great, great bit of kit. Not yeah. used for what they're uh, supposed to be yeah. used for, but uh, certainly makes life easy when you're fishing yeah. like this. Really. That's nice and simple as well. So it was just below here that they did the filming for Captain yeah, that's Impossible. Right. Yeah. yeah. Allegedly anyway, just in front of that house. The water was a little bit clearer. It was, I think it was filmed into the water, I think. Yeah. Nice bit, nice bit of colour on today. Mmm, nice tinge. Although it's got that cold look about it, yeah. hasn't it? Really cold look. You get like a like a smoky, bluey smoky colour, mm. doesn't it? Yeah. Lodge the feeder, the feeder will go downstream with the fish and it'll just literally just rock back. And all the line will go slack. Yeah. But yeah, you're only fishing for a few bites here. It's a difficult water to fish on. They're getting bigger. They are, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you up substantially up the size of your hook. Yeah. Fishing so about a 10, 10 or 12. A size 12. Yeah, yeah. Very small cage feeder. So static fishing with dread, it doesn't necessarily well, always pay off. No, they, uh, they catch a lot on the feeder, on um, uh, you know, priming the feeder. That's, that's a popular way. I'll try and cast it, see what happens. The maggots that you're throwing in the centre of the river, are they tucking into the far bank? No, that's where I just get cheese off and I want to fish for a grayling. <laughs> <laughs> or chub if I can, or brownie, he'll, yeah, he'll attract fish from a long way down. The God knows. The insurance is a bit tough though. <laughs> <laughs> there are the occasional one, yeah. It's just about everything. Let's have a look then. Old rivers, is it Neil? The old 
Brickford. River at Brickford. London AA, the uh, LAA river. Yeah. Uh, this is the old river, uh, the, the old stretch. There's the main old river over here. This is one of the, the carrier stretches. Fantastic value, £25 a year. Yeah, it's a day ticket £10, or it's I think it's £25 a year. Yeah. Yeah. No waiting list? I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not a member. I, I, I fish it on the day ticket. Oh, poach. Yeah. The bailiff's on No, the it's, um, Stuart's al always here. You wouldn't get away with poaching down here. That's what. That's my standard non-scientific trotting. And it happens to, uh, that's quite like that's. Uh, Equivalent about 5AA, a wire stem stick, which I've not used for years. But I would use that method on the Star or the Avon and under a much heavier float with maybe four, five, six, seven swan shot. Yeah. Just a bulk. That happens to be a number four dropper down to a 20 hook, fine wire 20. A little bulk of that's 3AA no, and a couple of BB. Yeah. And that's how I invariably fish. So when you have. So when you're holding the float back, this bulk shot helps to keep. Well, I think so. Yeah, I'm not a great believer in these nice little shot, you know, shirt, shirt buttons or the, you know, the float will go through like this. I just don't believe it happens that way. No. Um, this has caught me fish for 30, 40 years. Yeah. Sometimes I have two bulks. I split that bulk into two. Yes. Sometimes I spread it out, but that nine times out of ten, that's how I fish any moving water. Yeah. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't know, but it works for me. And you, uh, you've gone so far down to on the size 20. So I, I've got a hook on there now, but there's a yeah. Did have a size yeah, 20. Yeah, there's a 20 on there. there. Fine wire 20. I, I go down to 22 here. 22. Yeah, on the stour I'd, I'd go 18s and 16s if I'm fishing maggot uh, this this time of year for the big shop. Um, but forged hooks then. Yes. And probably heavier heavier hook lengths up to about two and a half three pound hook lengths. Yeah. Although your main line is what? Uh, this one is uh, three? Uh, three and a half, I think, floating floating main line. Right. Um, I can't remember the brand now, but. It's a different species, isn't it? The yeah, shape of the, the, shape well, of the head and the mouth. Sure. Fat on it, yeah. easy, easy to find their fry, isn't it? So they've got to chase after them. Oh, it's